In the campaign for world peace, more and more children seem to be stepping into the spotlight. Youngsters have written letters to world leaders, and Sydney schoolboy Eamon Burke recently visited the Soviet Union at the invitation of President Gorbachev. Now, a 12-year-old boy from Australia's Hare Krishna community has written a peace song calling for the release of fellow sect members from Russian prisons, psychiatric hospitals and labour camps. Tracy Bowden reports on a musical plea from the Krishnas to the Kremlin. These children are growing up in the idyllic surroundings of the Hare Krishna farm at Mwoolambar in northern New South Wales. But they're learning that for followers of their faith elsewhere, there are harsher realities. What do you know about the Soviet Union? Can you think of anything you know about the Soviet Union, Prahlad? It's cold. It's cold. It all started in a history lesson. The subject, the Soviet Union and its treatment of Hare Krishnas. All of the devotees have been put in concentration camps and hospitals where they make them a bit crazy. They're not being able to follow a religion of their choice. Just for chanting Hare Krishna they get persecuted. Then the children learnt of the death of a Krishna baby in a Russian jail. The baby's mother was in a concentration camp and the um and she was only the baby was only allowed to see her mother one hour every day and she just died. We thought that if we wrote to Gorbachev and if we wrote a song to for the world that it might help in a little way. Prahlad was born into the Krishna religion 12 years ago. He wrote the words to the song, a musician did the rest. What would you say to Mr Gorbachev if, if you could ever talk to him? I would tell him um, how I don't think he would like it if he were persecuted for his religious belief. Please, please let our friends go. So for the Krishna kids, it was out of the temple, into the recording studio, and onto the peace bandwagon. Mr. Bobachov, you may say you want peace and that's okay. But try to see a point of view. The Hare Krishnas want peace too. I hope everyone will listen to the music and it will bring more attention to the human rights position in the USSR. Do you think it can do any good? Yes, I hope so. If we all can do something to help them, it could stop. Tracy Bowden reporting. That single will be released later this month through EMI and a follow-up single is planned called Surprise, Surprise, Mr. Reagan. They call themselves Prahlad and the Krishna Kids, and they're the latest act to be signed in Australia by the big record company EMI. It may be a little unfair to compare them with Australian Crawl, Pseudo Echo and other names signed in the past, but EMI says the song Please Let My Friends Go has definite commercial potential worldwide. I looked at it as a commercial proposition. Secondly, there was nothing wrong about what these kids were trying to achieve. Um, I'm not a Krishna devotee, this is not a Hare Krishna company. Um, 
But there's a bunch of kids that, that believe that they're, you know, some of their, their family, if you like, are being held in Russia. It's religious persecution. Uh, on top of that, um, it is a very attractive little song. Um, the kids sing it extremely well, and it has a broader appeal, I would think, uh, outside the Krishna uh, circles. Face paint and the sarongs are no marketing gimmick. These children belong to a new generation of Australians born into the Hare Krishna faith. They believe as their parents believe. Prahlad's song, for which he wrote the words but not the music, is a plea to Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev for the release of 25 Hare Krishnas imprisoned in the Soviet Union for their beliefs. Though the recording contract with EMI and royalties from worldwide record sales could amount to many thousands of dollars, the star to be seems to be in it for all the right reasons. Asking Mr. Gorbachev to let our friends be free and free in the Soviet Hare Krishnas from being persecuted simply for their religious beliefs. To help other people as well? Yes. Uh, the song's for everyone. Hindus, Jews, Muslims, everyone. It's called Hare Krishna World, 330 hectares of lush farmland near Mawulambar in northern New South Wales. Rising each morning at 3.30 to begin their day of rituals, Hare Krishna World has its own school complete with live-in teachers. Pralaya, can you read from Ingenious Inventions? Professor Craze was excited. He was about to test these splash is flush matic EMI has grown big by backing winners, and if their parents are anything to go by, Pallad and the Krishna kids seem certain winners. by his uh, sincerity, by his purity. You speak to Pallad, you speak to the children, they have a great concern about uh, their friends in Russia and also about the future of this planet. I mean, it's their future that we're talking about and uh, it's not only them, but it's also, you know, it's all, in fact, Pallad is more or less calling on all children, not, you know, not just Hare Krishna children, all children to write letters to uh, either Mr. Reagan or Mr. Gorbachev to establish a far better world where people like Hare Krishnas can practice a religion of their choice. The project's executive producer, Gary Anderson, now negotiating for a second song, written by Prahlad, to be marketed by EMI in the United States. Mr. Reagan! Won't you please hear up the... As a Russian... How much money do you hope to make out of this exercise? Um, we don't know exactly what money is to be made, but we do know that the money that is made will go to a... Uh, we have Food for Life program in uh, Sydney and Melbourne, Hare Krishna Food for Life, and uh, we will establish these. Today, not only are the Hare Krishnas accepted, they're actually being depended upon for their aid work in such places as Sydney's King's Cross, where they give a thousand meals a week to down and out residents. The shuffling feet are reminiscent of the 30s, but the background music is no longer Buddy, Can You Spare a Dime? This is a modern day soup kitchen in Sydney's King's Cross and just part of the charity distributed daily by the Hare Krishna movement around the world. 
Although the derelicts, the drug addicts and the homeless are the main recipients of Hare Krishna welfare, up the stairs of their King's Cross temple, a dining room equal to any upmarket restaurant. The food is still free, but the atmosphere is designed to tempt a better class of clientele. Amongst the diners this night, the Reverend Ted Noss, whose wayside chapel just down the road has struggled to bring religion against the tide to the godless King's Cross for a generation. Hare Krishna is in a way, I think, in the 21st century will fulfil the role that the Salvation Army fulfilled, say, in the 18th and 19th centuries. There is total independence from government and absolutely no desire to develop any dependence upon government. And uh, in this day and age, that's a singularly great achievement. At the same time, there's a, obviously a very profound spiritual element uh, combined with that that I know very little about, but I can see a, a very deep faith there. Krishna devotees say they have the resources to serve an infinite number of meals and whatever the demand, they'll stretch to meet it. David McLaughlin for Seven National News. Welcome back to Good Morning Australia. Now, Melbourne recently saw the opening of yet another fast food store, but this is fast food with a big difference. All the products are natural. The burgers contain no meat, fish or eggs, and all the products are made strictly according to the lacto-vegetarian creed of the Hare Krishna. The cafe opened just over a month ago and business is booming. Bert Lange, the manager, is with our live eye unit in Melbourne. Good morning, Bert. How are you? Very well indeedy. And in Sydney, prepare a sample of their fare, our devotees Tony Kay and Brian Lloyd. Tony, Brian, good morning. Good morning. Now, Bert, how's business been fast food wise? Well, it's been fantastic from the first time we started up. We uh, started on the 16th of December and uh, business has just been growing day by day. And now, what, what's, your, what's your menu uh, on it? What, what do you got? Well, we have different things. We have all different types of burgers, lentil burgers and curd burgers and we have a tofu burger and a variety of other ones are in the pipeline and uh, we are also hoping to do pizzas, hot apple turnovers, chips and pakoras. Pakoras are like vegetables in a batter deep fried. They're delicious too. This is all Koshi Krishna, huh Tony? That's right. <laughs> now Brian, you're the chef. Yeah, right. Uh, now, <laughs> you don't feel good. <laughs> what, uh, show, us, show us some of the food that uh, Brian's talking about. That, um, well, uh, this one here about. is a tofu. It's what? made for tofu. Tofu. Yeah, right. it's very popular in the east. It's made and of it's soy bean. Yeah, it's right. made from soy bean milk. That's the, the meat, so to speak. Right. Of it. Now, what do you do? You grab that and you put it where? And we put it in the sauce. Well, here. let's let's do it. Well, make right. us a make us a, a curd it. burger, is it? Uh, yeah. Go <laughs> curd <laughs> burger. <laughs> you have got to be uh, careful, uh, haven't you? Mother, little whiff of this. This is uh, soy sauce. Yeah, it's a tamari mixture with soy mm -hmm. sauce and a uh, right. little water to thin it down. Tony. I guess with the, while, while Brian's doing this, we're looking at a multi, potentially multi-billion dollar industry. Has this been done in the United States with the Hare Krishna? No, this is actually uh, a unique situation. This is a kind of prototype for Melbourne restaurant, so we're looking very closely at it. Right. And uh, as uh, as they say down there, it's very successful, so we're, we're very optimistic. Mr. Lange, any tips of advice, Bert, for uh, the, your Sydney uh, uh, Krishna fellows? Yeah, I have. Uh, be prepared for a lot of hard work. <laughs> what, what's the most popular item on your menu down there? Well, I'd say it'd be the Mega Burger. The Mega Burger, yeah. which contains what? Well, that's like the Big Mac of our range. That's this one here. Hey, look, look, look what I found down here, Bert, right up here, Bert. <laughs> Krishna ketchup. <laughs> Real, Krishna, you're about to put it on the Krishna right. bun. Yeah, da, 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 da. Is good. that enough? Yeah, Sorry, yeah. Bert, I interrupted you. That's okay, no problem. Now, well, <laughs> the Mega Burger. Yeah, that's by far the most popular one there. Right. The Mega is on yeah. the on your yeah, right. That's the yeah. one right in the centre. Right there. in the middle, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. We're just getting our curd going here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Tony. How many stores do you intend opening? Because it, it looks like a gigantic business. It certainly smells good. <laughs> well, uh, we've got no big intentions of opening one immediately. Uh, yeah. I mean, in the future, if there's public demand, by all means, we'll hope to open up a lot more. But is this uh, going to be what Mac Krishna or something? No, no, no. We'll keep it to Gopal's Burgers. <laughs> Gopal's Burgers. <laughs> yeah, tell me one other thing. I believe you serve uh, a type of Coca-Cola. What's that? Well, Coca-Cola make a product called Decaf Coke, and we serve that. And we also have a lot of other uh, different... And that's caffeine-free, right? That's caffeine-free, yeah. yeah it, we must make a point, Tony. Lacto-vegetarian right. means no milk. Right. No, 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 no. No, no right. eggs. No eggs, no fish, uh, eggs or meats. Nothing at all. Uh, no, no, but yeah. milk products are very important in our diet. You know, right. cheese, milk. Uh, uh, butter, ghee, very important. So right. our, our diet actually is centred on different milk products. Yeah. Brian, can I ask you a really personal question? Yep. This looks so healthy. This looks so good. Right. How can I say it? How come, <laughs> I mean, you're a substantial guy. Right. I mean, he <laughs> enjoys his cooking. What a must do. <laughs> is this, is it, I mean, this is, is this weight free, calorie free? Yeah, <laughs> these particular burgers are. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. He's taken off 10 stones since I've known him. <laughs> <laughs> I've taken off two. Let's see how we go now. <laughs> Mm. Uh, we need a drum roll here. Right. <laughs> okay, what's the what's the taste test, Gordy? It's As very someone good. who would appreciate a good lot of food. It's very good, Tony. It's great. I feel spiritual healing powers flying through me already. <laughs> <laughs> do you have anything? Uh, do you have anything sort of Krishna consciousness on the French fried line? Oh, we certainly do. All our French fries are cooked in maize oil. Actually, I'd like to point out that although our diet is lacto-vegetarian, we also cater for people that have a totally dairy-free diet, like vegan people and that, so uh, it's uh, encompassing a broad, a broad scale like that. When it opens in Sydney, I'll be right. down there. Okay, yeah. we'll give you a personal invitation. Harry's Cafe de Wheels is worried, <laughs> let me thank tell you. you. <laughs> and Bert, thank you very much for showing us your takeaway. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Quickly. Uh, it's at 139 Swanson Street in the city. It's diagonally across from the town. Hall. <laughs> Guaranteed to lay, raise your level of spiritual consciousness to a new high. <laughs> Not like the omelette you get in Bali, I hope. <laughs> okay. Would anybody, would please, would anybody step what, up here, little one boy? Left, one left, one here. Come, oh, you come, come here. Burger? Come on. <laughs> that's it, little boy. That's it. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Now, all this is contained in the Hare Krishna Gourmet Guide of Vegetarian Cooking, Tony. All right, and we're going to be giving away 50 free copies this morning to the first 50 people who ring through to the King's Cross Hare Krishna Centre. How oh, many copies? 50 free copies. 50 free yep, copies for you. 50 free copies. I love the way the Harrys have picked up into the capital as well. 50 free copies of the first people who ring the Hare Krishna Centre. Where is it? In King's in Cross. In King's Cross. This week's special only. So what's on the menu today, Chef? Well, we've got many uh, wonderful pieces of burger here. That's, we, we just took over. We've got lots of soya bean curd to go around. We've got some gherkins left. This is, what camera is this yeah, on? Right. This, is, this is soya bean curd, a little bit of Krishna, Krishna ketchup, uh, right. cheese, as, gherkin. Homemade as mayonnaise. As, mm -mm. as far as uh, Hare, Krishna's are, Hare Krishna's are concerned, what can't you eat? What's an absolute no-no? Well, there's no meat. No meat. No, no fish or eggs. No fish or eggs. Mm. So an egg McMuffin is pretty good. Yeah, no problems. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> And then we'll have his bad again, news. look to compete with McDonald's or somebody like that. Well, this could be the start of something very big. <laughs> this one, this one. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Next time you're working by, past your local Krishna chapel, drop in for a bite. <laughs> Welcome back to Good Morning Australia. A wedding is always a great time for the whole family and friends to get together and celebrate the love of two people. Yesterday, Good Morning Australia went to a wedding with a difference. It was conducted in the traditional Hare Krishna fashion. And Good Morning Australia reporter Sheridan Jobbins joined in the festivities. For 5,000 years, people from India have been married in traditional Krishna ceremonies. Krishna being a forerunner to the more familiar Hinduism. In the ceremony, mantras are chanted, the couple's spiritual master makes a speech about marriage, the couple exchange vows, and the marriage is consecrated in a ceremony which involved the bride walking around the groom seven times while rice is thrown over them, and her sari is tied with his dhoti. The couple are now married. For the Krishna movement, this wedding has been of special significance because it's been between two of their more highly respected devotees, Sharmila Bhattacharya, a Sydney doctor, and Amarish Das, otherwise known as Mr. Alfred Ford, the great-grandson and heir to the car magnate Henry Ford's estate.
no matter if I own the whole world, you know, maybe for 60, 70 years, then you die, then where do you go? You know, of course you need religion. And it doesn't, you never know how long you're going to be here. I could walk out the door today and get run over by a truck. Wealth, it really doesn't mean anything, you know. It doesn't matter how much or how little you have, you still have to face death. And what would great-grandfather make of all of this? He was into some pretty avant-garde things. Explain <laughs> <laughs> that. Pure <Pyramid> power. <laughs> I think he, well, he was into reincarnation, I know, then vegetarianism. I think he would have liked to travel, liked exotic things. After the sharing of vows, the throwing of rice, what wedding would be complete without breaking some bread with friends and family? What a feast. The only other traditional similarity is the sense of relief when the whole thing's over. I'm glad it's over. <laughs> Do you know that as part of their tradition to have 100 courses at a wedding breakfast, at a Hare Krishna wedding? Goodness. It could take you most of the day. <laughs> and evening and, and the next day and, 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 and the day. breakfast as well. It was funny, when he was in here talking to us last week uh, about the, the wedding, um, he, he was so confident uh, of the changes that have made in his life. A lot of people still treat the Hare Krishna, well, they call it a religion, I suppose it is, uh, as, as being a little odd, but mm. certainly uh, he thinks it's done wonders for his life. Mm. Oh, it's nice to know. It's all faith and, uh, and tradition, really. So sure. as long as it keeps you happy, I guess that's the, the main thing. Yeah. On Boxing Day, we covered the beautiful Hare Krishna wedding of Alfred Ford and Sharmila Bhattacharya. We got so much response from viewers who were very curious about the Krishna lifestyle that we decided to invite Sharmila back on the show to tell us more. Good morning and thank you for the garland. It smells beautiful. It's the best I've smelled all morning. Sharmila, most people only have a superficial view of Hare Krishna, That's the right. bow paint and the robes. What does it mean to adopt the lifestyle? Well, the main thing is to chant Hare Krishna regularly every morning and following the four regulative principles which involve no meat eating, no gambling, no intoxication and no illicit sex. When you're married, I believe, even then there is very specific rules about sexual relations. Yeah, we only engage in sex in order to have children, even in marriage. W wouldn't that reduce the uh, intimacy of a couple and their ability to uh, just uh, be close to each other? No, it doesn't because in Krishna consciousness we develop a higher taste and we have so many things to share that uh, it doesn't take away any intimacy mm. from a married couple. So the only point then is to have children? That's right. Is that sexist? No. The whole purpose of sex life is meant for procreation mm. and since it involves it takes, for in order to progress in spiritual life, you have to get away from this concept of being... Physical. Yes. So that's why, mm. in order to accentuate the role of the soul, which we really are, we are spirit souls, eternal parts and parcels of God, Krishna. So that helps us with the understanding that we are not these bodies. Mm. And the more you engage in sex, you're actually... Becoming obsessed with the body, body rather, than, rather the than the soul. Now, what were you doing before you joined Krishna? And, and give us an idea now of the day you lead. Right. Well, I was a student at Melbourne University when I joined the Krishna Consciousness Movement. I was doing a master's. And uh, now I'm doing a PhD. And uh, my reg uh, routine day for me involves getting up about not, no later than four in the morning, chanting Hare Krishna for about a couple of hours and um, offering uh, the foodstuffs to Krishna before breakfast and then go off to the hospital for a full day of research and coming back yeah. home to read some of the nice books I have here. Why does a woman, obviously of great intelligence, offer foodstuffs to, a, to a, an ethereal being? Oh, Krishna is not an ethereal being. He's He's God. He's the supreme personality of God. But and he can't we eat have those cakes. Huh? Yeah, but he can't eat the cakes. He, what's so wonderful about Krishna is that he does eat them, but he still leaves everything for you to have. Uh, your, own, your own feelings about the future of your life. If you'd never come across Krishna, wouldn't you have been happy in yourself and satisfied? If you, uh, no. no, I would have missed out on a great deal because I think every person in their own lifetime comes across this question in their mind that who am I? What not there more to life than just what I'm doing right now? 
Where did I come from? Every Where morning, am I going? Every morning at 5 a.m. I yes. know exactly what you're talking about. But everyone, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> but everyone shelves that question because right. there is no answer to it. But when I came to Krishna consciousness and read these books, I found the answers to these questions and they they have provided a definite goal mm. in life and I can see everything in the proper perspective right now. So it, mm. I think my life would have been incomplete without Krishna consciousness. And you can get up at 4.30 a.m. and smile? Yes, we all smile and give dance. Me the book. Give, me the, give, give me the book. I must read this book. We've got to leave it there. Thank you very much for coming in. People are fascinated about, uh, about your lifestyle. And uh, I would like, uh, first of all, to thank you, Shamila, for sharing more of your time. And I don't know about the diet, but certainly how oh, to do it positively. It has some vegetarian recipes, but it's right. different from any other vegetarian cookbook because it tells you how to spiritualize right. your food. Um, this is just a little paperback a, yeah. about reincarnation. All right. And um, this is a biography on the founder of our movement, A.C. Right. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Who I won't repeat that. You We've got to leave it there. Thank you very much okay. for coming in. Thank you. We'll be back with more of Good Morning Australia and more peace of mind after this short break. Amusement parks with a theme have certainly become the trend. Each weekend, thousands of families spend thousands of dollars at places such as Old Sydney Town, the Gold Coast Sea World, or Dream World. And now a new tourist attraction has sprung up just south of the Gold Coast tourist strip, but in New northern New South Wales. And as Brian Anderson reports, this really is a world of difference. It's a fair dinkum enough little corner of Australia, but then again it is different. A rich river valley west of Mwilumbar in northern New South Wales. Peaceful, quiet, and home to a people who are still the object of curiosity wherever they go. Here's one place that booze is banned. There's no sex on the side, no eating of meat, no gambling allowed. A society that claims a divorce rate of only two or three percent. The Gold Coast has its dream world and sea world. Now northern New South Wales has its Hari Krishna world. 400 hectares of prime Aussie countryside that the Krishnas are developing as a tourist trap. It's their rural retreat as well, a six million dollar development that already has its own school and housing estate, together with a marble temple, restaurant, souvenir shop and display of Australian native birds to keep the customers coming in. Although talk to the tourists and you'll find that the Hari Krishnas themselves are the main attraction. We found it very interesting. It's the first time we've ever come here. We brought 35 people and we offered them the same deal for the same price uh, to, to come to here or to get off at the Moulinbar Harbour cell. And they chose to come here. There was only two got off. So they chose this instead of yes. the poker machines? Yes, yes, yes. 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 That's, well, that's saying something. The Hari Krishnas certainly don't hide away from the outside world. Their farm is open to visitors at any time, but this was advertised as a festival day and sold to all comers like any other tourist attraction. A sort of meet us down on the farm and see what we're all about day. And any ladies that you see that have a red dot on their forehead, they're married. And any ladies that don't have a red dot on their forehead, they're single. So it's like when you go to the army, you can see, well, he's got three stripes, he's a sergeant. So you can tell I'm married. You're married. Right, I have a family, my wife's <laughs> around here somewhere, and my daughter. And those men that have the, the orange robes, they're not married. They're Australians, but they follow an Indian religion and lifestyle that's thousands of years old. In the early days, they were ostracised or ignored by the general community. But it seems that after a quarter of a century, they're here to stay. I didn't know very much at all, except that, uh, well, obviously that they were vegetarian and that they had a rather severe uh, lifestyle. Shirley Craig is a Hare Krishna grandma. She doesn't follow their religion herself, but two daughters and five grandchildren live here at Hare Krishna World. When they come home to stay with us, they mix with so many other children. It doesn't seem to be any problem for them, though. They don't feel a part of a different world? No, no, they, it doesn't faze them a little bit. Sometimes you can see other people uh, look at their, um, their hair, you know, have, they have the little piece of hair at the back, but uh, no, they, it doesn't seem to weigh them. So I just can't think of the word, but I know that they're very very at ease with everybody. The feature event of the day that most people were waiting for. A genuine, live before your very own eyes, Hari Krishna wedding. 
colourful, noisy, and it seemed a real crowd pleaser. But did the Krishnas win any hearts? And just what chance do they have of turning their devotional Disneyland into a fully fledged tourist attraction? Has it changed your idea of what sort of people they are? No, I doubt not. I don't think so. So what sort of people do you think they are? <laughs> uh, uh, got to be careful what I'm saying here, haven't I? No, I, think I'm... They're, I think they're righteous people. If I'd come again. You would? And the children have enjoyed it, so... So they've won a few hearts, have they? Oh, I think so. <laughs> Just as people. I was expecting, like, more Christianity or more... Uh, not so happy one. I, I reckon they are quite happy people. Christians, they're not. Happy, it certainly seems so. Their lifestyle is as strict as that inside any monastery, yet it's open to the outside world at the same time. And provided they don't run short of people to undergo their very public wedding ceremonies, Hare Krishna World could well become a popular and profitable tourist destination. Hare Krishnas, showing uh, Queenslanders what we're like uh, over the border in New South Wales.